Okay, I'm going to be a bit of an asshole. I've seen this post multiple times now by the same person broadcasting their solution to this try hack me challenge. The beginning steps were all fine and dandy. It is the later solutions that they have that I have issue with because it's encouraging and promoting bad practices and just in general like shitty approaches to how you would solve these in a scalable and long-term secure solution. So to introduce this challenge, it's JVM reverse engineering. The introduction tells you like, here's the JVM. The class file format is pretty simple. The bytecode is stack based. So given these instructions and it's a stack system, what would the value be? Here's Java P that'll come up in the next section. Simple hello world. Here is a class file, simple hello world. Use Java P on it to disassemble it. Tell us some stuff that it tells you. Cool. And here is a crack me. It's a very simple crack me. If you dump it in a disassembler Java decompiler, you will see that the password is inline right there. Of course, in a disassembler, password equals correct password. It's all right next to each other. So just disassembling this code, you should be able to say, oh, they're very close together. This is probably the correct answer. Then they introduced basic string obfuscation which they implement like this. It is a XOR. This is the text that you need to your XOR here. And when you run this through the XOR, that is the correct password. And if your user input inputs, or if your user input matches that XOR data, that is the correct password. Then they bring up ASM because I'm just gonna bring up the next sample for context. This is a custom obfuscator, or it was custom at the time. It is Binskir, now dead project. And they say ASM is a powerful open source library for uh, manipulating Java bytecode. Uh, you can use tools like Java D obfuscator, which have a transformer system in place, which match obfuscator patterns and, you know, deobfuscate those patterns back to the original code. It uses ASM. So using Java D obfuscator, it will find patterns and replace the obfuscator patterns with the original code. Problem is, at the time that this challenge was released, it did not have a bin secure transformer. It didn't have pattern recognition for that, so it wasn't able to deobfuscate it. And I don't think it still does. I don't think it has one yet either. Uh, the original author of deobfuscator has stopped working on the project. It is still maintained by a couple of uh, random people. <laughs> There's a couple of people who would still keep the project up to date every now and then, but it is not receiving any significant updates with new transformers. So the challenge is right to suggest that you should learn how to do these things by yourself. Mind you, it is a bit of a, you know, logical, not logical, it's a bit of a challenging step from the previous action and task four. But if you do want to do JVM reverse engineering, you basically need to know this stuff. So it's not going to hold your hand. It just says, hey, <laughs> get going. But uh, the next section is, uh, well, but I have the sample open here. And then the next section is an even more complicated version of this, but it is basically the same structure. So again, the issue that I have with this post is the tools and approach they have. So I'm going to scroll past all the basic stuff and get to the, the issue part. So here, they're using Ghidra for Java reverse engineering. You know Ghidra. It's the NSA native reverse engineering tool. It's free. It's the replacement for IDA, except it's not because IDA is better. But it's free, so I mean, you can't beat free. The issue with this is that while Ghidra is designed for native reverse engineering and does fairly well at it, it is not designed for Java reverse engineering. I know it's funny, the program is written in Java, you'd think it is good at doing that, but the Java program cannot understand Java. So what happens is if you drag a Java class file into Ghidra, it will kind of try and smush it 
into a native-like format and then reinterpret it as native code and then use its native systems to decompile it, which it it uh <laughs> it doesn't do a good job at. It will handle basic old Java code, like Java 7 code, but anything new it kind of gets confused on. And if you introduce obfuscation, it just shits the bed. So what they do in this tutorial is the only thing they're capable of doing rather is decompiling this XOR function and then pasting it into a uh, yeah here pasting it into an Eclipse project and then they in the other sample which had the string uh, pasting it in and then running that value through the XOR and then copying whatever they print out so the issue is you can't do that with this one. And they notice in the new solution, in the new challenge with Ghidra, hey, there's no string I can copy and paste. What, what do I do now? Well, uh, they use reflection, which is bad for a multitude of reasons. Uh, number one, reflection is ugly. <laughs> it's tedious to write. So if you were doing a CTF, this is kind of slow. Number two, it's um, not really that secure. Hypothetically, if this is just a CTF, it doesn't really matter, but if you're reverse engineering something professionally and it's malware, it's a bad idea to just load the malware into memory to get a few strings out of it. And then number three, if it is a CTF and the CTF developer knows what they're doing, they can easily add their own form of anti-debugging to prevent this kind of stuff. So long-term vi long viability of this approach isn't really there, but here it does kind of work. And of course, the advanced section is just the same format again, so they they repeat the thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what I want to show you is that Recaf has recently been working on the 3x series. 2x is the official release currently, but 3x is what we're working on. Watch this. So here's the obfuscated code. Now, the standard right-click actions don't work because this code is obfuscated in such a way that it breaks Java parser. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. But that is no matter because we have the tab over here which lets us interact with fields and methods anyways. So like fields, methods. But what I wanna do is right click the main method and I wanna optimize it. The arguments here don't matter. Watch this, click. So you can see the strings got replaced here, here, and here. And there is our ciphertext. The way that this works is by using SSVM, made by XDARK. Now, this is kind of like Java D Obfuscator in a way. Java D Obfuscator does have a feature like this, but SSVM is a bit more flexible. Plus, in Recaf, we have it configured to deny file IO access and networking access. So it is a sandbox environment which Ideally, it shouldn't be doing anything crazy on your computer. The only thing that it could possibly do is, you know, run slow. But hey, if it runs slow, we can just add a timeout too. So, you know, whatever. But that being said, SSVM kind of has a JIT system in it. So you can see this point here. So it isn't really that slow, but that's besides the point. Point being, you saw how easy it was to get this value out. It just decrypted that text. So let me undo. So here is the text before. You can see that there is a call to the one class which has our encrypted strings and the decryption call here, right there. And I can do optimize, click, and there's still the cipher here. And I can optimize it again to get the cipher text because it's doing it once per pass, right? So, I mean, Hypothetically, you don't really need to do anything else. You can just click the optimize button until you get the answer. But of course, that's not all SSVM lets you do. You can also invoke methods with any parameters you want. So like this is just an XOR function. So if I have a lot of A's, you can see this is an XOR pattern. But if I copy that text and I paste it in, see this, I copy that. I'm going to optimize this again. And you can see 
they are the same value. So using SSVM and Recaf, you can generically get <laughs> pretty much any little crack me challenge uh, or CTF challenge with almost zero effort. So it's a cool little approach that uh, I like to thank Xdark for because he did a lot of great work on SSVM. Uh, but anyways, back to this. My, my main complaint is you're encouraging people to use Ghidra for JVM reversing. And I, I already said it, just, I have a whole rant on it. Ghidra is just terrible at reversing Java. If you want to check out the full details and why it's so bad, I have a, like I just said, I have a rant video, you can check that out. But I just wanted to show off that there are way better solutions for this kind of challenge. And going forward, we're going to be working on making them even more accessible. So with that, I am done with this rant. Goodbye.